Hey guys, today we're going over the mural of Hogwarts Castle that my son and I did together for his room. Okay, here's a brush for you. I here's get the big one. Me. You get the big one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? So I made a few of these murals for my kids' rooms over the years. My oldest is now seven years old, so we, we've we made them together, I don't know, for the last four years or so. We've changed it up, and this one he requested to do a Harry Potter-themed mural that he wanted for his room, as well as new bedding, which... Uh, so everything in his room right now is Harry Potter. We just finished the first book, so he is obsessed with it, as expected, because... It's Harry Potter. And we started out with just pretty basic, you know, the cheap acrylic paint from Michael's or from Joann's or any craft store, the like $1 paint. Um, I, it makes it so easy. And then I use a rolled canvas that I, I cut to the size that I want. I can make it really big. I've covered like two walls of there of my boy's room with a mural similar to this. I, the first step that I do is I make sure that we have a background color. Usually, I, I well, I never leave it white. I always paint with something. And so we decided to do a painting of the Hogwarts castle at nighttime. I convinced him to do it at nighttime. I thought that would be really cool, put all the stars in and stuff. And so, and plus the, Nighttime kind of makes it easy to do a limited palette. That helps simplify some of the shapes, some of the colors that we were using. And because I had my son do it with me and I I just kind of did this in between some of my other art projects, um, my other paintings that I had to get done, um, I just wanted to make it really easy, really basic. So I sketched it out. I started putting in the colors. You can see my son kind of comes in and he puts colors on top of mine. So I helped get the shape right, you know, because sometimes just the edges and filling it in is, um, needs a little more skill, but he could go in and he could tech make, put a bunch of colors on it and make a texture and look really cool. And he feels like he gets to be a part of the process, which is really fun for him, which I, you could see at the end of the video, he asked me to sign his name on it so um, he can, <laughs> because he did it. It's his mural, right? For his room. And he loved that fact of it. And so we kept it really simple. Try It limited our colors. I did like um, a navy a uh, blue, uh, kind of a brownish color. I kind of mix them together for different areas of the castle. And then I use like an orange and a yellow for the bright kind of candlelight look in there. And you'll see in the rocks, I did the same exact colors. I just added more of the brownish gray to it than the blue. And I'm then I have trees, which is just a basic green, like a dark green. And so it was really fun to just work out the shapes, the the style, the view that I wanted to see the castle from, and just fill it in. It made it a really quick, really easy project um, that my son and I had a lot of fun doing together. Now, he wanted to put a bunch of different things into this mural, but I did not want to include all that stuff and make it too complicated. I have to work out compositionally, you know, what would work and what wouldn't work. And so what we ended up doing is I limited it to the castle. He put in the snitch. You can see the snitch in the bottom left corner. He put that in by himself. I just helped him clean up the circle part of it. And he um, decided he wanted the Whomping Willow in there. We just started the second book and that's a pretty big part in the beginning of the second book. And so he wanted the Whomping Willow in there and so we did that as well as um, Hedwig, which we put in, the, which I put in there for him while he was at school. So the rocks were pretty simple. I did like kind of the brownish gray. I 
put in the shapes and then I just took uh, blue with my brush and kind of stuck some shadows in there and made the rocks feel a little more dimensional. And then instead of like putting it, you know, kind of finishing off the bottom of it, I just put some trees in there to, you know, and that helps give it some layering. So there are some things that are closer to you, some things that are further away. And I, I did not do anything special with those trees. Pretty, you know, Bob Ross, you know, just stick them in there, just go with it. And so putting Hedwig in was probably part of the more complicated process, um, required a little more skill, like that my son couldn't really help me with so much. But it was okay, he was at school and he wanted me to finish it so it would be a big surprise for him when he got home. Of course, it's not technically a surprise because he knew that I was working on it. But it, I just tried to keep it pretty basic. So the wings I did first and then I, I worked more shading into the body and into the head. Um, just so it could look 3D, it would have more of a form to it. And then once the basic shape was in, I went in and I put in those black feathers, which really um, was the key point here because it was like once you got those black feathers in, the shape of I, the black marks on the feathers, the shape of them really brought out the 3D shape of the owl itself. and. I th that ended up being one of my favorite parts of the mural was that was Hedwig flying in front of the castle. It looked so much fun. And so I waited until my son came home after school to start on the next part, which I all I did was were the stars and the moon. And my son just had a blast being able to do that. Um, we just put in a million stars we made them kind of cluster in one area to give it a little bit more interest and we put a moon in there and um it was it was just a really fun mural and once we hung it up on his wall he just loves it and he has me at the very end write his name in harry potter writing of course and that was the perfect finishing touch for him and now I need to write my name. Oh, you should sign your name right down here. Or you Mom, could sign it right down here. Mom, can you write it in Harry Potter? In Harry Potter writing? Uh-huh. Okay. Do um, it. Um, sure, yeah. Um, let me just think through it. Go grab your book and I can look at it for reference. In silver? You want it in silver? Yes. Okay. Unicorn blood. I'll do it in unicorn blood. <laughs> If you're trying to do this with your kids or do a mural like this for your kids room you know the most important things that I would say that you would need to do is to get inexpensive supplies uh, brushes paints you know just something that's easy to use for your kids and for you and secondly you know Try to keep it really basic. Limit how many colors you have and also limit the shapes that you include. You know, not very many details so that they can be a part of it. And the other thing is, is pick a subject that they love. You know, I, my son absolutely loved being able to do this mural and he talked about it with all of his friends and I keep every time I go by their school you know his friends are always talking about how Christian got to paint a big painting in his room and they just think it is the best ever. So if you like this video you can like or you can comment but what I really want you to do is I want you to go over to my website Brooke Bowen Art Dot com and you can sign up for my email list and I'll send you emails when my new videos come out and I'll send you a bunch of other really cool stuff um, some background stuff about how I make my art and all this stuff <laughs> um, 
You can also find me on Instagram. I have a lot of pretty pictures over there. At Brooke Bowen Art. Thanks very much. Have a great day.